Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing a video featuring a new product and you know how I love to do new product shares. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you what we're working with. All right. But before we get into that, I just want to take a moment of your time and talk about my membership group, The Barnyard. The Barnyard is a coaching membership group that I developed not so long ago, and it is a group for creatives. I'm not going to stand here and talk to you and sell you on the group. I'm going to list all the benefits that you get by joining this group right here. And in order to join, all you have to do is go visit my website, and there's plenty of information there for you. All right, now let's go ahead and get started on this project. All right, so what product am I talking about? It's brand new. It just recently came out on the market. I've never used it myself, and I'm super excited to give it a try. It is the new Modern by Melange. It is their water-based alkyd paint. It is a cabinetry and trim paint. It can be used on furniture as well, and I'm super excited to try it. So let's just talk a little bit about the product and then we'll Why get started. Why is this product any different than any other paint out there on the market? Let me just give you a little read from their label. It is a water-based hybrid alkyd enamel formula, ideal for doors, trim, molding, and cabinetry. It provides a flawless, smooth satin sheen, because I knew you were gonna ask, what is the sheen like? Um, that cures to a rock hard enamel finish for the extreme durability of a traditional oil-based paint, but with the ease of water-based paint, which I love because I'm not a big oil-based product fan. I don't even use a lot of oil-based stains. So staying away from those for me is just really key because I like to spray and they're extremely hard to clean up in your sprayer. So I like to stick to a water-based paint. The recoat time for this is between four and eight hours. So it is a little bit longer than the normal furniture paint, but we're gonna give this all a go and see how it goes. That is the only thing that I'm a little like, uh, but I have used many paints that actually were even longer recoat time than that, like a 24 hour. That was a little tough for me. I'm not the most patient person in the world and I want to get right to it. So waiting that extra time might be a little tough, but I think it might be worth it in the long run because of the type of product it is. So let's give it a go. So we're ready to go ahead and get started with our project, but I do want to mention, I just didn't show you on camera. I've had plenty of videos where I show you all the prep, but this is what I used today to go ahead and clean this piece. If you see some of these little spots here and here, all that is is a little bit of wood filler. I went ahead and used a little wood filler because there was a couple dents and dings. I also scuff sanded my piece. I always recommend cleaning it, scuff sanding it, and then wiping it down. The reason why you want to scuff sand it is it helps with adhesion. So if you have a slick surface, or even if you don't, just it's a really good habit to get into. It gives that paint something to grab onto. So let's go ahead and get started. So for today's video, I think we're gonna use this color. This is Nom de Plume. I've used this color before in their one line and I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful grazy beige. And then I do wanna recommend when you're putting your paint in a sprayer, use a filter. I'm um, in some of my older videos, people commented that I wasn't using a filter and sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't. And they're absolutely right. You should always use a filter. You just never know and you'll save yourself heartache and headache if you get clumps in it. So the other thing I want to mention is this is my Fuji Q4 spray gun. And being that it's a gravity feed, which means your cup is on the top, there's nowhere to set the gun. I would have to hold it. So I bought this stand off of Amazon. It is in my shop and it's perfect. It can work for any spray gun, but it works perfectly for these gravity feed spray guns that can't sit on a counter. So I've wondered how to get these little tabs off. I just take a little tiny screwdriver and I just kind of pry them off and they pop all over the shop. It'll drop somewhere, but that's how they're pretty tough actually sometimes to get off and sometimes they're pretty easy, but that's all I do. I just kind of slide a little tiny screwdriver underneath and then I can go ahead and open my can. Now that's still straining through and I do want to mention I'm not going to thin this. I think you can if you want to, but it's recommended because it's such a thin consistency, you really don't need to. So we are going to go for it for the first time without thinning it and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got my sprayer on in the background, so I'm gonna talk a little bit louder. And it's on for a reason. 
Before I always go into a piece of furniture, I do a little test to spray pattern. I've got my nozzle here all the way open, which means the maximum flow is going to come out of this needle. I never change out the needles when I'm switching brands of paint. I just typically don't have to. But here's what's happening without thinning. Can you see that? Nothing. Which tells me that it's too thick to push through this needle size on my sprayer. So I'm going to go ahead, back over to the workbench. I'm going to thin it just a little bit with some water, that's all, and come back and test it out. Okay, so I'm back. I just added just a little tiny bit of water to it so that I could get it to push through better. Perfect. Now we're ready. dry as you can see the yellow stuff there that is wood filler I went back I had a couple of little dings and little just little things I needed to fill it has been four hours I'm gonna go ahead and go in now with my second coat here today in Northern California we're about 77 degrees it's actually perfect painting weather and we don't have very much humidity here so it's pretty dry so I'm gonna go ahead and go back in but our first coat I gotta tell you is looking good I told you about prep it says on here too, you're gonna to wanna to use um, a degreaser, a TSP type cleaner, um, clean and rinse well. You wanna sand and scrape any loose or peeling paint off. That's key because I get asked that question all the time. Can I paint over something already painted? Yes, you can, but you wanna make sure that you get most all of that old painted finish off. And if you've got any peeling paint, don't paint over it because your final outcome or your final finish is only going to be as good as what you start with. Um, now, here's the thing. How many coats does it take? It's no different than any other paint, two to three coats. But the dry time is a little different. So you're gonna have to be a little bit more patient. Dry time on this, depending on your climate, is going to be four to eight hours. That is a little bit longer than most water-based acrylic paints or other furniture paints. Those usually set within one to two hours for recoat time. And let me tell you, I've worked with this a little bit. You don't want to rush it. This formula needs its time to dry. So you're going to want to let that happen. I broke the rules. It says right on here, do not thin. And that's, well, it's not what I did. You guys saw what was happening. It wasn't pushing through my sprayer with the maximum valve opening for it to push through. And I have a really decent sized normal needle that most paints push through. So I know it said don't thin. I literally added a few drops of water, stirred it up, and it really seemed to help. So I'm gonna say I'm leaving that one up to you. You don't have to do as I do. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. The idea behind not thinning some paints is that even though this is a water-based paint, sometimes thinning it can, can change the composition or the durability of the paint. Adding just a few drops is not going to have anything happen too crazy, so I wasn't too worried about it, but I'm just letting you know I broke the rules. It does say do not thin. <laughs> Uh, stir before application, use adequate ventilation as normal. Now, here's the other thing with this type of product. You don't want to push the boundaries and do this in an environment that's too terribly hot. Um, nothing above 90 degrees for your internal shop temperature. It doesn't go, it isn't going to perform as well and you can have issues as to how it will lay down, how it will dry and all of the things. So I would definitely would, don't break, break that rule and pay attention this to that. It can be brushed, it can be rolled and it can be sprayed. So it's extremely versatile. I am gonna go ahead and do a video where I brush a piece. Unfortunately, I'm a little low on inventory right now and I only have custom client pieces so I can't go painting their pieces with colors that they didn't order. So I will be doing another video that's gonna show brushing this on so that you guys can see for those of you that brush, how well it brushes. 
So here we are at the end of the second coat. It has come out beautifully. I'm convinced that two coats is just gonna be fine with this light color. This was a non-bleeding type wood species, so I wasn't worried about that. And I paint always the interior there, the trim on the inside. And because this takes a little longer to dry, we're gonna go ahead and leave the drawer just sitting out overnight. We'll come back to this, to this tomorrow, take a look and see how it, it looks. If we need another coat, I will do another coat. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it and we'll work on the top tomorrow. Here's our piece. This is two coats. Two coats, no primer, and it's all dry. It has actually been sitting for over 24 hours. I didn't work yesterday. So came out absolutely beautiful. The coverage is amazing. It has a beautiful satin sheen to it, and it is super smooth. So now... Okay, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being subscribers. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so that you're notified when all of my latest videos are released. Subscribing to my channel helps keep my channel supported and keeps me going. Now there is something new that YouTube just gave me access to, which is the super thanks. It's located right down here below the video. If you really enjoyed this video, feel free to give me a super thanks. I sure would appreciate it. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below. I love engaging with you and I will always answer your questions. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next video.